Hey everybody, it's Darren Burt. Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, HQ Behind the Scenes Live where we, well, we go behind the scenes and we talk to some of the names, faces, uh, you know, whether it be a glass blower or a smoke shop owner or a vendor uh, or someone else associated with the cannabis industry who's, uh, who's doing something we think you should know about. So over here on the side, Carrie Radistock. And she is the founder and CEO of Hippo Premium Packaging. So, hi, Carrie. How are you today? Hey, Darren. How are you? I'm doing great. It's fun to be here with you. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to uh, to join us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and Hippo Premium Packaging. Do you package hippos or? <laughs> Uh, well, not not quite. We we really specialize in cannabis and CBD and hemp products. Um, but uh, I, I came from mainstream, where I I, I have a uh, commercial print, uh, print technology and packaging background, and I I did that for about twenty. Well, I I, I quit my job just two months shy of my twenty year anniversary to start uh, Hippo Premium Packaging back in two thousand sixteen. And it, you know, I, I just really saw a need for this this industry to to you know to elevate their packaging because back then, I, I walked into a dispensary and I was just like, oh, nobody's really packaging anything. There's just jars of weed and a couple of Ziploc bags with a label on it, and I'm like, oh no, this is not really packaging packaging like I'm used to. And I, I realized that the that this market really could use some professional guidance. And so I, 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 I was working for a Fortune 500 company, um, our, our Donnelly at the time, and that's one of the largest in, in, in uh, North America. And we, um, you know, I just, I, I had five different guys walk into a, a shop in Vista, California with a vape cartridge in a six week period. And they all needed packaging for this vape cartridge. and. I, I, it was so shocking to me. I just said, we have got to do something to support this this community. So in 2015, when while I was um, really researching the industry, I went to MJ BizCon. That was five wow. years ago. There were 5,000 people there. It was at the Rio in Vegas. And fast forward to 2019, there were 35,000 people at the convention center. So our industry has just blown up. Yes. And yes. Uh, but I knew at the time when I walked in, Darren, that it was the right place for me. I just felt like, you know, it was the right place for me. But I had a lot of learning to do and how to apply my knowledge to this cannabis industry and the CBD industry. So it's it's it has been a, a big learning curve for me and our team as we've navigated um, uh, growing our business. So I, uh, maybe a interesting question to ask you would be, Coming from mainstream, is there a difference between packaging a mainstream product like a toothbrush? I don't, I don't know. Something, something very mainstream to a cannabis product. Well, there is, and and to be honest with you, Darren, when I first came into it, I thought to myself, you know, I am going to bring best practices from mainstream, apply them to the cannabis industry, and you know, that'll be that. It's a no-brainer, but it is quite different, and. Um, the first thing that's different is most cannabis companies, at least when, when I first started, and it's still pretty much the case, are pretty small. And they start with very small quantities. And in packaging, small quantities aren't really your friend. And, and, and in order to be profitable um, and to get their ROI where it needs to be to, to run a profitable business, you've got to get your quantities up high and you've got to be real careful about your, your expenditures. Um, but uh, uh, some other differences is like take cannabis for industry, uh, for, for, for example, um, it's got to be child resistant, tamper evident, protect the product, and then include all the regulations that change state by state uh -huh. with, with a mainstream product. It's one skew. You can go statewide. You can travel across state state lines with your product. You can be a multi-state operator without having to have you know, um, businesses, sub sub companies set up in each state. So there's so many variables, but how it affects packaging is that even if they're state by state, your quantities aren't as lar large as they would be for mainstream. So to try to, to make those kinds of profits, you know, once, 
once the Fed hits the, the switch and we go through probably four or five years of hell, we'll get to a place where we can, you know, we'll have uniform packaging and labeling regulations across the United States and, and hopefully interstate commerce will be real prevalent by then. Now you're talking cannabis as in the actual cannabis THC, cannabis that might come from a dispensary. How about for smoke shop products like that are legal, such as like a grinder or a pipe or something like that? Well, those those types of products are definitely mainstream. Um, you know, you're able to package like a mainstream product and as well as CBD and, and hemp mm -hmm. products. They do not have that child resistant um, category uh, on them. Um, but, uh, but the, the thing is, is that a lot of smoke shops and things like that, they're a small business and they're again, you know, unless they are, uh, have, you know, 500 stores across the United States, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of quantities are you going to order? There again is the problem that short run packaging tends to be very expensive. So kind of limiting for a brand to, you know, do it, it, it unless they're, they're, they're able to get their we we consider micro runs at like 500 a thousand up to 5000 and then very small runs are 5000 to 25000 and then medium size run runs are 25000 and above so mm -hmm. you know and and but a comfortable size run is is at least 50000 100000 that's that takes a lot of growing you know time for a company to grow to get to those kinds of quantities but, but again if i'm a small um a small product company and I'm just launching something, I'm just not going to put it in a plain brown no. wrapper either. That's no. a mistake, right? Well, and, and you bring up a really good point, Darren. Um, we, I like to think of packaging as the physical expression of a brand. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been a, a real marketer and brand developer. We, 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 we do brand development and creative work here at Hippo because that was another thing that I felt that we needed to bring was really high end graphic design work because the big guys are coming, you know, and they're going to be entering this space and we've got to one, be able to stack up next to them on shelf and, and still inspire trust in that product and look good and expire, uh, inspire desire. That's what you're kind of trying to, trying to get to. And, and, and they're, they've got multi-million dollar budgets to do this. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to be coming in and, and those brands that have set themselves up well with their brand development and their look and, and, and how they're they're approaching their business um, and developing client a client base and loyalty. They're going to be the ones that are a prime target for some of these bigger guys to, you know, to buy uh, when 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 the when the time is right. And so, so that's what, the can, I, what can I do? What can I do with a limited budget? Well, you know, and, and that's it. so part of the what problem, can you do with what, my limited budget? <laughs> that's a better question. Um, so, you know, what we what we have is, you know, we, we've got to go with stock products. Um, I think, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, for example, here's here's a brand that, that has just launched and it's it's Wisdom Essentials. It's the one that I think we were introduced by. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they do such a beautiful job. They've got um, tinctures. Here we go. You know, they've got tinctures. Now, what is interesting about cannabis and CBD is there's so many ways to consume them. Can you see that? <laughs> you mm -hmm. can see all that. And then they've got, I'll finish showing you this adorable little shipper box, you know, oh, very cool. because it's an online thing. And then they've got gummies. So, but what I've just shown you for a brand launch is pretty complicated because they have probably four or five different types of packaging. They've got flexible packaging, corrugated boxes. They've got folding cartons. They've got um, the containers, labels, you know, all of this and, you know, this type of container. So that's just one brand launch. So, what you had asked me earlier, what's so different about, different about mainstream to cannabis or CBD or some of these, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can consume this product. And yeah, and you, and a lot of people like to cover the gamut and, and that makes it expensive and mm -hmm. 
and kind of uh, uh, prohibitive, but you've got, if you have a decent enough budget. So this was the launch, you know, one. And what they did was a, a stock jar with mm -hmm. a label. And that's mostly what people do if they're, they're on a budget and they need to get it to, to, to market pretty quick. But now we're now we're in development, so we're we're going to make this white pop much much better. But we did a custom color of the container, and uh -huh. it doesn't cost any more um, just to do that custom container. And then it starts looking more premium at retail. We really, can start it bringing down it doesn't the cost any more. No, because we are going direct overseas, um, and they they bought these in in small quantities from a domestic supplier that had them in stock. These we're going to make, but we're making them at a, and we call an MOQ, which is a minimum order quantity of 10,000 mm -hmm. units. So we can do a custom color at 10,000 and it's actually cheaper than their original one, but it takes probably two or three months longer. So it, it, packaging is a bit of an evolution. You know, you start with, with the simple and then you improve on it as your quantities go up, and as you're able to plan better and allow yourself the timelines needed for production. Now, what I what I know about um, Wisdom Essentials, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're kind of going for a different demographic. They're going for an older, um, you know, people golden, like you and me, Darren. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, just, but they're going for an older demographic that if you hold those products up again those are very they're colorful they're eye-catching but but they're also very they're um, what would you say um appropriate they, there look, you go. That's the word, appropriate. they look like mainstream i mean we're, we're looking at baby boomers is and 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 what that wisdom essentials is going for the modern midlifer and so you know that's a really cool and it looks professional this is what people are used to seeing so mm -hmm. when they see this package when they pick it up and hold it they're gonna they're gonna feel safe they're gonna feel a sense of trust in that product um there's there's a, a study that shows that the packaging really accounts for about 60 percent of a trust in a product so i mean your packaging if you can package it well usually people think that you can produce something well when you say trust and i'll add legitimacy to that if you go from what you just showed us with the stick on label to the more com uh, finished packaging does that really make a difference there well it does and and it i mean Perception, and it obviously. Over, you know and over time but when you're starting out you need to get your hand get get start getting some sales behind you it, it's important to be able to crawl walk run run and and there are options out there but basically you know you're going to want to go with stock uh, jars and and maybe really try to differentiate yourself with maybe your folding cartons like the boxes that you put them on um this particular company you know, most packaging is done on what we just call SBS board, which is just plain white paper. Yeah. And then we'll add uh, treatments to it. Like we'll add um, finishes, spot UVs. Okay, here I've got something. I, I don't know. Can you see how that kind of shimmers? I don't mm -hmm. know if you really see it. There's a spot of it that's a shimmer. We've got a metallic ink, but this is just plain box paper. And then you can go a little more high end and use this is like a shimmer paper. I'm, I'm sure you're probably not able to see it, but printing on the inside, printing little messages. This is delighting the consumer, making people feel happy about their purchase. Um, these are, are super cute. These are flower boxes, and this is a, a very high-end stock. So it's uncoated, and it's it's, a, it's got a little bit of a texture. So when people pick it up, they're like, these guys went the extra mile. They, you know, This is a little nicer than what I usually see out there. I was talking with uh, one of our HQ magazine advertisers this morning um, about product development, and they have something that I think is very uh, popular within the smoke shop industry is for packaging is a clear package so that people can see what's inside, what they're going to buy without having to touch it, without having to have, you know, somebody open up the box. Yes. I'm going to come right back. Okay. This 
Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of things. This is a transparent package and it's got, mm -hmm. it, it, it would go into a smoke shop. It's a chill hit. And basically you would put this in your freezer and then you put it, uh, you load it on top of your, your bong before hitting on it and it cools it off and it makes it chilled. But that mm -hmm. is a transparent packaging. Yeah, so people nice. are, are using this. Now, a lot of people for flour, whether it be hemp or, um, or you know, uh, cannabis, THC, they will use a flexible bag with a window. And they, mm -hmm. that way they can show, this is, this is probably one of the most common types of packaging for cannabis uh, flour that is a mid-range flour. Now, then you, you had talked about, you know, speaking and designing for your demographic, which is really important. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a, uh, it's got the window in it and it right. has got kind of a, a, a real uh, illumination kind of uh, pattern mm -hmm. going on in the background. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So it looks like sparkles. So that's also for CBD gummies and things like that. You see a lot of those in, in the window packaging. Yep. And, or, and uh, for for THC in California, you've got to be in opaque packaging. So most of our edibles are in opaque packaging. But you know, you can take an opaque package and put a spot gloss on it. Um, you can uh, print on like foil sheets and then spare out the the white and then let the foil shine through. So it looks like you've got a shimmery effect on it. You can just apply a lot of different uh, so, techniques. So that brings up a good question with all the different regulations from different states for to different products how, how do you how do you manage that especially on a budget where you can't have 15 different types of packaging yes it's i mean what i would recommend first from a brand perspective is start with what you're really good at and and you know start small and crawl walk run um, but start with only one or two skews if you're a cultivator you know, start with uh, flour and pre-rolls and high-end flour in jars and mid-shelf flours in bags. And so, you know, kind of know your lane and start small. And, but uh, in terms of regulations, you know, it, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. Now, we, had to, we, we have an in-house compliance expert that helps us manage regulations state by state. That's so, a busy and, job. Yeah, it's a big job. And so, but we're doing just packaging and labeling rec regulations. There are some companies out there that, you know, do all the other, uh, the Simplifya is one of them. And I think uh, Philo is another, these are large regulation kind of helping type of uh, companies. Mm -hmm. But but for us, we just needed to add that layer just to help us get through the process. Cause we need to know when we're sitting down with a client, what are the regulations in that state? Can, do we need, you know, opaque, like Colorado has opaque jars. They need all their product in opaque packaging, but most people want to show the flower and they leave a little, they want a clear jar with a, a window to, so that people can view the flower and, or their concentrates or that, that vape cart, you know, because that color is really important. So do you just go back to the, better safe than sorry and, and develop a packaging that's going to be more universal for, well, for now? Well, we, we, we have different categories because, you know, we, we have to, um, we have to have clear packaging for California, except for edibles. And then, you know, some of the other States like Colorado has opaque packaging. So you've got to kind of have, you, you've got to be able to provide all different types of packaging, you know, both domestic and, international um, offshore so that if people can plan we can bring the cost down and you've got to have them in every category and uh, whether it's clear or opaque and we have high-end stuff and and kind of more starter kind of stock items you know for for people who are you know more of an everyday brand so i wanted to read something that i read read something to you, have you comment on it. This is, a, I'm just going to take this out of context and read it to you from, it was from your blog. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, we must get away from the green, black, and purple color palette, cartoon type illustrations, and for God's sake, no more marijuana leaves. 
<laughs> That's so funny. And I don't know if you read the rest of it because then I had to look at myself um, and because my color palette was, was a little darker, but, and it's so true, you know, um, there, there's, there's a culture when I first got into this industry, everybody was green and black and, you know, it was, it was pretty, it was really marketed to the stoner, um, culture. Yeah. There and, was a lot of pot leaves on. Yeah. Uh, pot yeah. leaves on everything. And, you know, there's, there's a, there's a rule. Don't use a pot leaf. Don't, you know, don't use green and black. I say don't follow rules, but make sure the, what you choose is by design. Don't be lazy and say, I want, you know, don't, don't and, and if you think you're marketing to a stoner, they're more sophisticated than that. They're not that anymore. And it's, it's usually the founder of the company that this is what they've grew, grown up with and this is what they're used to. So they're, they're trying to emulate, you know, the brands that maybe they grew up with and, and, mm -hmm. and it's probably not going to hold them in good stead as this industry develops because there is some very sophisticated branding and, and brands out there. I mean, many, many of them. I mean, so, here's, yeah. here's a, we're going to show you one that's actually really kind of cool. Um, and this is a, a Northern California company, but a woman owned business. It's called Garden Society. They have pre-rolls, mm -hmm. they have edibles, a little blister tray that is has got their logo embossed in well, it. I can see it's a little more of a feminine touch on the packaging. Yeah, it's a woman owned business and, and they they are going for the feminine, the 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 soccer mom, which is a big demographic. They're going mm -hmm. for that demographic. Is there yeah. is there a universal demographic and I know there is, but what's the packaging trend for a universal, I'm going to cover all my bases type of product. Well, this is right now we're in a dog fight for brand positioning and customer retention. This mm -hmm. industry is all coming together. Everybody's fighting over, you know, trying to, to gain market share to make them attractive, to cre increase their sales, blah, blah, blah. So most, smart companies are actually kind of picking uh, their lane unless okay. you're, you've got a lot of money um, behind you, then you can kind of go more universal. But I mean, to be honest with you, if you try to appeal to everybody, you appeal to no one really, you know, because you just kind of are like, ho oh, hum. There are some people that say, I just want to be the everyday brand. And so I'm not going to spend money on graphic design. Well, that that that's not going to put you in a good position to compete with these people who are spending money and everyday people need to be talked to in a certain way as well. What, this is a real general question. So answer it however you like. We don't have time for a college class here, but what's, what's the purpose of packaging? Uh, the purpose of packaging is to protect the product right to express the brand to uh build confidence in you know and to fulfill regulations you know it's 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 got to do a lot it's got to do a lot when tell from the a brand story yeah tell the brand story for sure what yeah from a retailer's perspective and i'm sure you've done a lot of research on this what's the purpose of packaging to grab well, the attention of the customer well, I mean, retailers kind of want to carry the top brands. The top brands have beautiful packaging. They want to, you know, a lot of retailers want to kind of be seen as, oh, I've got all the top brands. And, um, you know, from a retail perspective, packaging is can be kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, one of my uh, great friends from mainstream actually started a, a company. He was a co-founder of this uh, amazing company in Washington. And they did a beautiful brand job and beautiful packaging job. And he called me right after it launched and goes, I'm in trouble. I'm like, what? I said, I just saw your launch and it looks it's amazing. He goes, none of my retailers want to take it. My packages are too big. And it was beautiful. That was so gorgeous. But the, he made it a little oversized to try to create a little mm. differentiation in the marketplace. And it did not it was not received well. So he didn't take into didn't take in merchandising. You have got to take in what the retailers want. Now, a lot of people, sometimes retailers want, um, 
and and in mainstream what what you do is you package all your products say you you do you know 30 of these in a in a little point of purchase display and that point of purchase display all like is a little box and then you you know you open the lid and you pull back mm -hmm. a header and you perp off the sides and then it becomes a display so the retailer can just go boom boom put it on shelf and it makes it easy they love that but dispensaries some of them love it and some of them don't they'll have their own way of how they're doing packaging and it's not universal so i would recommend to any cannabis or you know cannabis company that wants to be in retail to really you know go out and do your market research of the, where you want to start at least and find out is it do they want these point of purchase displays do you yeah. want that or you know but, it, but then for CBD, you should package things like a mainstream product or for anybody else that they say you've got little tiny pipes. How are you going to get them from not breaking? How are you going to display them? If you make it easy for that retailer, they'll be likely to go, OK, I'll take one case or two cases and boom, boom, put them out. Yeah, you make a good point because a lot of the smaller companies um, and, and ones that are just launching products start online. Yeah. So yeah. that merchandising aspect of the packaging isn't as important to them. Well, it's not, but yet it is. Now, right. what's interesting about online companies now, they are spending a little extra money on their packaging because there is the unboxing experience and, you know, just the brand, you know, reveal experience. Mm -hmm. um, take example, you know, um, uh, Harry and David, they, they package pairs and they can package pairs and charge you 20 bucks for six pairs. Yeah, and some cellophane, why? yeah. <laughs> it is the packaging, you know, and when they get it, it's all wrapped in this beautiful little, you know, box and then blah, blah, blah. They, they ended up changing their packaging, um, Harry and David did for something less expensive. Their sales dipped, um, the products weren't selling, they had to go back to the higher end mm -hmm. packaging because it's a perceived value. Right. So this is an online company and they spent, they, they made sure their packaging was right. This is their little shipper, even, you know, pay attention to the details. So let's talk about some of the trends that are happening in product marketing and, and um, merchandising packaging for the cannabis industry. Well, people are, to be honest with you, just really pulling out the stops. So people are going up. I, I'm seeing more and more beautiful packaging um, as, as this industry develops. One, people are getting funded, so they have the budgets to create uh -huh. some special things. Um, maybe they have a, a few companies under them with, with, with some, you know, some successes. So they're able to fund these, 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 uh, and, and then they have more experience and they're able to take six months in development or more to create a custom kind of package. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're seeing it more because the industry is developing and, and, and it's growing and it's, it's able to support those kinds of programs. But, um, but I see that, you know, the trends are, are really to get away from that stoner look. So a lot of really clean, open, um, you know, contemporary, not too much, you know, even white or, you know, a lot of uh, uh, clean space around logos and, and, and copy light. Uh, people are, are, are doing just really just something more sophisticated. The, 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 the industry itself is becoming more sophisticated. Things people that are going to transcend the trends. Yeah. And, and then they're, they're pulling out the stops. They're using like foils and embossing and, you know, really clever brand development that really gets the, 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 the customer excited. I was really, I, I was, I'm really lucky. I got to judge uh, the pack awards and the pack awards is this international packaging uh, convention that we, we won the first cannabis um, uh, award a couple of years ago. And so they invited me to be a judge this year. And we just finished actually on Monday uh, judging these, but I got to judge brands like Dove and um, gosh, uh, Scott's Miracle Grow and, and some others. But there was this, uh, there was a cannabis package in there that was so creative and so well done and so fun that it was, it stuck with me for days. It, it was memorable. It was tongue in cheek. It was interesting. It made, it had layers, you know? 
So brands are providing, they're, they're really trying to delight the consumer and to create that customer loyalty, because to be honest with you, we're, we're probably going to see, you know, we've had an explosion of brands and that's going to taper off and it's going to go down. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these, these brands will survive that and everybody's doing their best just, you know, to do that, but they're, they're really adding layers. When you talk about the customer experience, um, how prevalent is AR with packaging right now? Whether, yeah. it be a, whether it be a QR code or something else that, you know, adds another element to the story. Yes, I love AR. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something. But um, I, I love augmented reality. And it's, it's not as prevalent as it could be. But it's not uh, as difficult as it. People, think people it are is. using QR codes for maybe batch or strain information, but mm -hmm. not as much for brand storytelling or customer engagement, which is a shame. But it, it's not it, it's not unusual given where we are in the development of this industry. Uh, right now, people are really trying to spend their money on the basics and get a foothold into the market, mm -hmm. and you know anything anything other than that is, you know, they, they're not, they don't have that extra budget to do that. But let me show you this. Okay. I'm going to show you. Okay. You can see my little iPhone, right? There's mm -hmm. a hippo app. We're on okay, the app. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. So here we are. Okay. I'm going to show you something. Hopefully it'll read. Okay, is it reading? Okay, I got to turn the volume up. There we go. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I. All yeah, right. it, show, it shows me an augmented reality inside of that shape that you've pre-programmed in. Yeah, this is an invisible tag, and um, yeah. and what what's interesting about augmented reality is that it, it can actually be put on packaging that's already out there in the market. Right, um, you could just be on the the target for the phone yeah. could just be the logo. But and and, and it, it, there are some limitations around it. There's got to be enough contrast, there's got to be mm -hmm. enough points. They've got to you know, there are some limitations, but it could be around a logo or an image or something like that. But it's it, it's 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 a little difficult, but another problem with companies getting there is maybe they don't have that many video assets, you know? So sure. not only do they have to pay for, you know, this, this process, but then they've got to do some development and, and it, you can just throw a piece of video on there and do that. And is that really your end goal? So then you've got actually got to start from the beginning and say, what do I want out of this? What am I trying to get? Am I trying to increase sales? Am I trying to gather data so I can further communicate with these people? You know, so so you've got to have kind of some strategy behind a program like this um, before really implementing it well. I can um, really see I could see that real being really effective. Uh, just as an example, let's say I came out with a new rolling paper, and I used that AR to have a little video about how to roll the perfect joint. Yeah, that would be yeah. Or, or any product, how to better use this product. How, so that, yeah. The people in the store don't have to spend so much time on the customer education. Yes. Or even like a, if you're a makeup or something, how to do smoky eyes or how to right. do this or how to apply this particular palette, not, not any palette, you know, right. different things like that. Like you said, you mentioned the, the story and that mm -hmm. just adds more levels to that story. And it's what I show people this and, and I'm sorry, it was a little, it didn't quite translate there well for you there, but it, and people go crazy and they all want it, but then it, it becomes so much only because of where we are in our, the development of this industry. As we develop, as we grow, I think you're going to see a lot more at AR. Mm -hmm. What's another trend that you think people will see? Well, you know, I mean, Trends are, I think we're going to see, continue to see an explosion of brands, especially in CBD. Uh, hemp has been huge. Uh, a lot of people are, are, are starting with CBD and hemp with, with plans to move into THC. 
um, when, when, you know, they can get licensing or whatever it is that are more mm -hmm. funds or whatever. Um, I, I think that you'll continue to see more of a shift towards mainstream packaging, to be honest with you. Right now, people are put it, blowing in, blowing out all the stops. They're doing everything that just to try to make everything look great. As, as we keep going, they're going to have to look at their budgets, have to figure out how to do things less expensively. They've got to start making money. This industry has got to start making money so that they can get financial backing and so that they are positioned well when the Fed hits the switch. They have got a good, solid bottom line. Right. Let's see. I'm jumping around here a little bit, but let's say I have five products, similar products. They're standing on the shelf right next to each other. What's your best tip for making my packaging stand out from the others? Engage the consumer. Do your homework. First off, figure out who your consumer is. Don't market to everybody. It's boring. No, you're not going to appeal to anybody, really. Unless everybody you're puts the pot leaf on there. Yeah. Well, and, and pot leaves are not necessarily a bad thing. I sure. Mean, you know, this is a this is a beautiful little pot leaf, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's done well. It's got emboss on it. It's done. It's done with taste. It's done with forethought. You know, I mean, if don't just slam a whole bunch of pot leaves and think, hey, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you've got to I would say hire the best graphic designer you can afford because that's the foundation is the look and the feel. A lot of people get their niece, go on Fiverr. I have people come to me with a logo and go, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, oh, you know, I have to say, well, it's probably not gonna, gonna stand you in good stead. And I've had people, you know, they'll come and say, okay, I'm gonna raise the money. I'm gonna do it right. And so, but you know, all that takes time. How but important sometimes some a logo will look fine and just we'll go oh my god well you know the logo's okay but the font is, doesn't work with it let's yeah. let's work on that how important is the logo to the packaging it's only one element of the packaging it, the logo is the single icon of your brand so mm -hmm. it's going to be it's going to be more than a logo it's going to be how people remember you but it's when you first have a logo it's just the beginning and it's just a logo until you build that whole brand story, that whole brand persona around you. So start with the best graphic designer, know your target demographic, you know, um, produce products that you're really, really good at, especially to start, minimize your SKUs um, and, and have a really good marketing and brand strategy behind you. That's the foundation of the business. And then work your butt off. That's what you gotta do. So they're going to call you guys, right? Hippo <laughs> packaging, because you guys have the graphics designer. You have the research people. You've got everything in line to make the product stand out and be successful. We do. And we have a lot of people. We just collaborated with some great marketing people that we I've worked with on National Cannabis Industry Association Marketing and Advertising Committee. So for marketing, brand strategy, everything you might need, we can bring in the right people to help get you positioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to be with us today. Thanks, and Karen. I'd like to have you on again when, when uh, another trend comes out, like to have you come on and talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to sit with you anytime, anytime at all. Hippo premium, hippo premium packaging, but the website is hippopackaging.com. That's it. We didn't want to torture people with too many <laughs> words. <laughs> Where, now, I, now I said this when we came when we first came on, but what's the hippo? Oh dear! Well, that was. Is a there a story that you can tell us? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, but don't tell anybody. Okay, it's a secret. Okay, <laughs> just between you and me. Let's keep it between us. So I was, uh, I was, it was right before MJ BizCon in 2015, and I'm like, we've got to have cards. Well, we've got to have a brand. Well, we got to have a name, and we're about to go to MJ BizCon, and I'm like, ah. So we rushed to get to get things together and 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 sat and tried to figure out a name for a few hours. And finally, I came up with, I've got it. You know, we, we were going to have two different businesses, one for the agency and one for a smaller run on demand kind of uh, program. So we, we said, OK, let me let me Google what is Latin for premium. Um, okay. And it came back 
that said, ah, oh, blah, 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 word hippo, word hippo. And I'm like, what the hell? Was that yeah, mean? I haven't heard of I Googled it. Yeah. yeah, I Googled it a few times and I'm like, hippo, huh? And then I'm like, okay, so what is, um, uh, you know, what what's Latin for luxury? Because we were going to do a, you know, an agency and it's luxury to have somebody do your, your stuff for you. So they said it's luxurious. So we ended up creating two brands at the time, Hippo and Luxuria. And once we, we started in the brand development and then it came back that I actually made a mistake. Word Hippo is a Latin translation company. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what happened. But we were in love with our hippo and we became the hippo. And as I started building the business and going out to events and stuff, everybody goes, you're the hippo lady. You're the hippo lady. Right. And so I, it's very memorable. And we fell in love with them. And it's a man hippo, even though we're a woman owned company, it's a man hippo. But And he's eating a cannabis leaf, right? He is. And I added that cannabis leaf at the very end now we have new branding but uh, or new business cards because this is so dark but mm -hmm. um this is our newer card which got a little shimmer and silver yeah, right. and, yeah. but that cannabis leaf i at, i added at the very end because i really wanted to make a statement that at the time i entered the industry people were afraid to talk about it they were afraid to say who they are and who they worked with they mm -hmm. hid the cannabis division and i was like no i'm not going to i'm gonna I'm coming into this industry and I'm coming in with both feet. And so. Nice. <laughs> well, I, I wish you some continued success and all of your brands that you work with as well. Thank you, Darren. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on today. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hit right. packaging.com. That's where you're going to find Carrie. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you.